As a parent, it's one of your most important responsibilities, keeping your child safe when riding in a vehicle. Child safety seats save lives and prevent injuries when they are used correctly and when they are used every time you travel in a car or truck. Choosing and using the best car seat for your child can be challenging with so many different ones on the market. You love your child and you want to protect your child from harm. In this short video, we will help you find the right seat to ensure that your child is always properly secured in a car seat that's appropriate for his or her age, height, and weight. It's not only the safe thing to do, it's the law in Texas. As children grow, how they are restrained in your car, truck, or SUV will change. So, let's begin at the beginning. This is Brandon, his wife Christy, and baby Emma. Like many parents of infants, they have questions about rear-facing car seats. They met with our safety seat technician to get some important advice. First, let's go over a few things before we take a look at your seat. Now, all infants need to ride rear-facing from their very first ride home from the hospital. But it's really best that they travel as little as possible. That's gonna be safest for them. Now, there are two types of rear-facing seats. There's an infant-only seat, and there's also a convertible seat. Now with this seat, you wanna make sure that it's appropriate for Emma. So you need to check the label to make sure that the weight and height limit is appropriate for her. Now the first thing that you wanna remember when installing a car seat is to always check the vehicle owner's manual and the manufacturer's instructions for the seat. Now let's take a look at where we wanna put this seat in the vehicle. One place that you never wanna put a rear facing seat is in front of an active passenger airbag. We want to put it in the center if we can get a good installation. If not, we will use one of the outboard positions. There are two systems that you can use for installing a car seat. You can use the seat belt system, and you can also use what's called latch. Latch stands for lower anchors and tethers for children. If both the vehicle and the car seat are equipped with latch, you can use that system. But you can never use both the seat belt and latch at the same time. Today, we're going to use the seat belt system to install this car seat. Right here, you have a recline adjuster that will compensate for the slope of this seat. We need it to be at a 45 degree angle for newborns or 30 to 45 degrees for older infants. I'm gonna take the seat belt, go through the belt path, and I'm going to buckle. Now I'm gonna use one hand to put some pressure in the seat and the other hand to pull all the slack out of the webbing of the seat belt. Now, I wanna check for tightness. So I'm going to slide side to side and front to back, and I don't want it to move more than one inch. This is a good installation. Now we're ready to place the carrier and Emma into the base. Okay, the first thing we wanna look at with the harnesses for a rear-facing seat the harnesses need to come from at or below Emma's shoulders. And if we look here, we notice that they are coming from below her shoulders, so we're good. Now we're going to go ahead and connect the harness retainer clip, and then we're gonna buckle her in. Now this is a five-point harness system, which is going to keep Emma super safe. Now we wanna get her snug. To get the harness snug, I'm going to pull on the harness adjuster strap. Now to check for snugness, I'm going to do a pinch test up at her shoulders. See how I can't grasp the webbing? This means that we have a snug fit. And lastly, I wanna pull the harness retainer clip to armpit level. Now you always wanna check the instructions on the seat to make sure the carrying handle's where it needs to go for traveling. All right, Emma looks great. What about the next size car seat up? When can we expect her to move into that? Now what Emma will need next is a convertible seat. Now convertible seats are larger than infant only seats and they go up to a higher weight and height limit rear facing. They will also convert to forward facing for when she gets older. They need to stay rear facing for as long as possible till the highest weight or height limit of their car seat. At a minimum until they are at least one year old and also at least 20 pounds.
Meet Jeff, his wife Christina, and their young son Jeffrey. It's time for him to turn around. That is, to go from riding rear facing to riding forward facing. Okay, well I can see you guys have used this seat to its maximum rear facing weight limit, which is perfect, that's exactly what you want to do. Um, but we do need to go ahead and turn it forward facing. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is adjust the recline, we're going to put it in its forward facing mode. We're also going to use a different belt path. We're going to use the forward facing belt path. And then the last thing we need to adjust um, are the harness slots. So we're going to take the car seat out of the car, have your son sit in it, and put it in the correct harness slots based on how tall he is. Okay? Okay. Let me just unhook it. Okay. Then I'm going to move the recline stand to the forward facing position. All right, now let's get Jeffrey up here so we can pick the right harness slots for him. Great, okay, now we're looking for the harness lots that are at or above his shoulders. Which ones do you think those are? Right there. Perfect, these top ones right up here, great. All right, now that we've adjusted the harness lot so that they're at or above his shoulders, and we've rerouted the lower anchor strap through the forward facing belt path, let's go ahead and attach the car seat to the vehicle seat. Now we're using the latch system, so let me attach the lower anchors and the top tether because latch stands for lower anchors and top tethers for children. And it's always best practice to use the top tether even when you're using the seat belt. All right, now that I have everything attached, let's tighten the seat. The tightening mechanism is on this side, so I'm gonna apply some weight to the seat right here and tighten. Okay, after I do that, I'm going to test for the tightness of the seat by putting one hand on each side of the belt path and sliding it on the vehicle seat from side to side and front to back. I'm looking for less than one inch of movement when I do that. Okay, mom, go ahead and put the harnesses around his body and clip together the harness retainer clip. Very good. Let's buckle in the buckle tongues. There you go. All right, now you can go ahead and tighten the harnesses. Very good, now move up that harness retainer clip to his armpit level. Wonderful. And the last thing we're gonna do is test for the tightness. There should be no visible slack in the harnesses and you shouldn't be able to pinch the webbing together at his shoulder. That looks great. Good job. This is Sheila, her husband Bob, and their happy first grader Arlene. She's happy because she's ready for the next type of car seat. They found out about something very important called a booster seat. A booster seat is the next stage of car seat you're gonna use when your daughter's reached her height or weight restriction on her current forward-facing seat. Let's take a look at what you have. Hey guys, great selection on this car seat. This booster seat gets your daughter up a little higher uh, that correctly fits the belts over her body. The shoulder strap comes right down the center of her chest, the lap portion over her hips. It needs to be used with a lap shoulder belt combination every single time. It comes in either a backless option or with the back. The particular seat requires that she sit in it till about eight years old or four foot nine inches in height. Good selection, good job. Meet Will and his mom, Kathleen. Will has finally graduated, not from school, but from his booster seat. He can wear a safety belt now. Seat belts are made for grown-ups, but when you reach at least about four foot nine inches tall, then you're more than likely gonna fit with a lap and shoulder belt, okay? And usually it's around the age from eight to 12. So what I want to do is have you get in the vehicle and have you sit down on the vehicle seat and put the lap and shoulder belt on. So we're gonna see if it fits you correctly. Okay, well, I want you to slide all the way back, so sitting straight up. Notice how your knees are bending over the edge of the seat and your feet are touching the floorboard? That is good. Now I want you to go ahead and put your lap and shoulder belt on. Okay, you see how the lap portion is laying low across the hip bone so it's not over your tummy. And the shoulder portion is going over your shoulder across your chest so it's not going across your neck or face. This is the correct fit. Now, Know that the seatbelt is only for one person, it's not for two or more, and the way that you're wearing it is correct. 
We don't want you to put the shoulder portion behind your back or underneath your arm. This is the way to use it. Another thing is that in the back seat is where you should be sitting. Most vehicles have warning signs that say under 13 should ride in the back seat of the vehicle. So we definitely want to keep you in the back seat. Perfect fit, good job. If you're thinking about getting a used seat, there's a few things that you should keep in mind. You need to know the history of the seat. This is important because if the seat's ever been in a crash, then you want to have it replaced according to its manufacturer's instructions. Also, the federal government has recommendations about that. You need to make sure that all the labels are on the seat. You want to make sure it has its instruction book with it. The seat should not be older than six years. You can find that on one of the labels that'll be attached to the seat and the Manufactured date of the seat is when you start counting the six years, even if the seat hasn't been used very much. You want to make sure that the seat has all of its parts and that it's in good working condition. And finally, you want to make sure that it's free of recalls. You can find recall information on the website of the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Let's also review some other important safety tips to help keep your child safe. Never leave your child alone in a vehicle, even if you think you'll only be away for a minute. Temperatures can reach deadly levels in minutes. In addition to being unsafe, leaving a child unattended in a vehicle is against the law, too. Because you travel with children, get in the habit of checking your back seat whenever getting out of your vehicle so that you never get distracted and leave a child there. You may want to place a toy next to you in the front seat to remind you that there's a child in the back seat. And remember, spot the tot. Make sure a back over tragedy never occurs in your driveway or in a parking lot. Our safety specialists, Tarika and Terrell, will show you how. So we're going to take a five second walk around the car. And in that five second walk, we're checking for children, pets, and toys. In this five second walk around the car, we can prevent injuries to children and save lives. Now we're done and it's time to buckle up and go. Throughout all the stages of your child's life, there's a safety seat and eventually a safety belt that should always be used for protection. And it's important for you to be a good role model for your child too. Make sure you always wear your seat belt. This will help your child form a lifelong habit of buckling up. Simple steps to protect your children. Simple steps that can save a child's life. <laughs>